All right, so let's move on to the second part of this presentation, which it is a marathon. So if you need to stretch, um, you know, maybe get a cup of tea, that's all right. Um, but we're gonna start in with uh, a multitude of perspectives with the panel. Let me just take a minute and say a few sentences about each person so that we'll have a little orientation. Um, James Elaine is one of this panel. Um, and he is the current curator, as I mentioned before, of a composite Leviathan. Um, he's also an artist uh, and he lives and works in Beijing. His artwork has been included in film festivals, museums, galleries around the world, and so has his curation. Uh, second panelist is Li Zhenhua, who's been active in the artistic field since 1996 and his practice mainly involves curation, art creation, project management. Then we have our lecturer, Joshua Jihong. Um, also, he will contribute to the discussion as he would like to. And then we have Barbara Pollock, who is actually going to lead this um, panel and do so with a gentle touch. So we've heard from her. And she has been writing on art since 1994 and is the author of many essays and books. Uh, in her writing, she often addresses the situation for artists in re uh, repressive regimes for a global perspective and particularly in China. So she's very qualified to discuss this topic. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to the capable hands of Barbara and we'll learn more. Hi, thank you. And um, thank you, Jihang, for that stimulating lecture. And thank you, Li Zhenhua and James Elaine. It's nice to see old friends. So we have all been working in the field of Chinese contemporary art for some time, and we all have different perspectives. Um, I think what's really interesting to me is that what brought me to China originally in 2004 was that I saw China as a case study in what would happen to artists in a country that was going through rapid globalization. And that's why I came to China. It wasn't because I loved Chinese scrolls. It wasn't because I loved Zhang Zhaogang. It was because I was really interested what would happen to creative minds that had to adjust to such things as rapid urbanization. And um, I really thought that China was very much like the conditions in Europe at the beginning of modernism in the early 20th century, with mass migrations, people moving to urban centers, um, authoritarian leaders, and reactions to authoritarian leaders, all pushing on the creativity to create something new. And I thought something new was going to happen in China, and indeed it did. Um, I've concentrated on artists a generation or two generations younger than the artists that Ji Hong was talking about. And I feel like they really reflect what it's like growing up in a globalized society because they did not know an older China. And it's especially interesting looking at gender roles and what roles women artists are playing in this new art scene. So those are all things I'd like to touch upon today. But, but to, to begin, I just want to ask Li Zhenhua and Jamie Elaine what they thought of Ji Hung's thesis um, and the artists that he used. Do you have any reactions to what we just heard? James? I think I would like to know your comments and then, yeah, I prepared my notes, yeah. Uh, I was, I want to thank you, Jehong. I thought it was a fantastic um, expression and understanding of what's been going on. And uh, I mean, I, I uh, it's funny, I, I'm a foreigner and I don't have, I especially was in kind of uh, interested in what you said about the last, the one uh, Huyo and, and memory and all, memory, how it flows and fragments through all of your uh, observations. But you know, I'm, being a foreigner, I don't really have these childhood memories, but I have an earlier generation's memories. My mother was born in China, uh, in Shandong. So I grew up with a much older 
more older, uh, and I think it might have been even you know, more exoticized for me as, a, as an American, uh, idea of what China was. And when I went, I was sort of shocked by, in 2002, 2006, 7, and 8, just shocked that it was very, what I thought was China didn't exist already. Uh, but um, I really think the, the topic of artists and urbanization and the change is taking place. I, I see it more on a ground level that, uh, that is, uh, it, it's only been, it's been had a very positive effect, I think on the artist, what I see. That it's, uh, doors have been created and doors have opened because of it for, the, for them to, and uh, that's the kind of, community that I'm involved with. So that's, I'm not really looking too far, much further ahead of Barbara, as you said, why you went to China. I went because I saw the potential, kind of explosive potential of like on a wave, like a paper cup on a wave, that the artists were gonna be carried along on this river of, of uh, urbanization, globalization. And they kind of have, I thought. So I, and I also saw a new world that um, had not, I felt like had been dying in New York or maybe in the United States uh, where art had become more uh, about itself. And in China, I felt that these, there was a vitality and a uh, urgency to the artwork that was on, about survival, but it was not blatant, uh, but it was about um, the energy of survival, the energy of optimism, the energy of something better, something more. Whereas I lived in New York for 20 years and LA for 10 and uh, I felt like it was just more already focused on career. Uh, and in China, I felt it was more just um, anything could happen. And so um, I think, Jia Hong, what you were saying about the fragmentation of memory and the fluidity, which I love the, the idea of the fluidity, I think it's, it's already hap it's happening. And that the, uh, the way the artists have, have uh, changed and grown is, a, is a, like their artwork is another, is a, another brick in the whole picture of, what, what, uh, of the urbanization. Li Zhenhua, did you want to comment? Yeah, um, actually I prepared a note while uh, Zhang Dianhong made uh, the presentation because I think Dehong is not just talking about, you know, um, a big picture about China. Um, he mentioned urbanization, transformation, but there's other, you know, kind of uh, background information and background situation for the, um, for the Chinese society, which is very important with the um, booming economy and, um, you know, and then of course the, the new centralization situation. So I'm just thinking, you know, what Jehun introduced to us is like a, a, was very particular, and I'm really touched by his personalized, you know, um, um, prologue of, about um, his his own history of Shanghai and also those kind of photos. And for me, that's bring the whole kind of presentation into a level of a um, a very, um, very particular kind of a so-called um, sharing and personalized situation. And I do think, you know, a lot in art today, um, where it, the people, where are the people and their feelings, which is much more important. You know, it doesn't matter whether it's a Chinese artist or um, international artist. Uh, it's all about how you understand things and how you unfolding those kind of, you know, and releasing those kind of information and context and bring them together and reconstruct again and being contextualized again. So I just think it's a, it's a beautiful intro and uh, thanks to Jie Hong. Um, and a lot of those artists um, like Wang Wei and Yang Zhenzhong, I curate Yang Zhenzhong's solo show in OCAT um, many years ago. And Wang Wei, we've been working together for, um, you know, for many projects with a, a group of artists uh, called Post Sense Sensibility. And if you know this group and this movement, you probably will understand, you know, by the late 90s, how many people have been working in this, um, in this kind of so-called experimental, experimental art and temporary theater and 
uh, trying of new technology and also seeing art and and also being critical and bring the topic whatsoever into um, a much more expanded Chinese contemporary art scene. Um, but yeah, so I think this is also, I think a lot of uh, what is what is more relevant today. If you've seen, you know, those kind of artists work from China, what do you think? You know, this is like, we're all engaged from one, one earth, we're all linked. Um, and, you know, what happened in China, what happened maybe in other places, what that means to everybody, you know, to the viewers, to the, to the audience. And then seeing, you know, what that uh, person story actually brings to you, um, which is for me much more, much more important today, which I think I highly appreciate again, you know, to Jae Hong, which is like, it's not talking about the tremendous big picture of China and Chinese contemporary art, which is like, he just pulling out, you know, um, all these fragments, let us um, have this moment to, to, to share. Thank you. Right. Very interesting. Um, I think both your comments really add to my understanding of Jahan's talk. Um, I wanted to direct my next question to Jamie, to James Lane, just to talk about the exhibition Composite Le Leviathan for a second. So we keep the focus on the show just for a second. How did it come about and how does that the artists in that show relate to what we're talking about, about urbanization and globalization. Jamie? Hmm. Uh, I mean, very simply, <laughs> I was invited to curate a show in New York, uh, in Los Angeles by Bridge Projects, and then later uh, by uh, Loring Augustine in the New York Gallery. And I mean, I, I, I guess the way I curate is just the way I live my life. It's just a as being an artist and living with the people, uh, eating with the people, visit, going to their studios, talking uh, to them, getting to know people. So it's a very intimate you know, relationship that I, I have with the, the people. I think I agree with Jen Hua and what Jie Hong said, I, how Jin, Jie Hong presented it. And, and I agree with you, uh, Jen Hua. It was a very uh, intimate kind of local and uh, uh, personal perspective how you isolated certain artists and certain works of art and how they exemplified what you're talking about with urbanization. And so uh, at that point, when I was invited, I thought, well, this is, this is what I have to offer. I want to, I want to introduce artists to the Western you know, community and have tried to be that doorway for them. Uh, so I just, when, when they asked me, I just basically stopped in my tracks and then turned around and looked back and saw what has been going on in, in my life in the past few, two or three years. Uh, who are the artists I've been working with at Telescope and um, the artists I've been meeting and just the show, be, that's how the show began and became. It was really based on a few years of just living, not curating really, but just living. And that's uh, how I collect. Uh, so, um, I'm just interested, uh, the artists in the show, do, do they reflect anything about this urbanization or globalization? Um, you know, they're a younger generation than Ji Hong talked about, but I see a lot of these forces in their yeah, work. Yeah, Zhang Rui with the collecting the Shanghai uh, 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 broken architecture and casting cactuses and, and concrete, you know, and painting them green or yellow and, and creating a whole new garden situation. Uh, yeah, and, even- Yang Yuanyuan, I remember, sorry to interrupt. Yang and Yuan who? From, uh, Yang Yuanyuan from Chongqing. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, no, please be, feel free to interrupt. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, that's, uh, that's fine. But yeah. um, when you said that you felt that Jahang had a more local perspective, do you feel you have a different perspective being being in Beijing, being a foreigner in Beijing, or is it yeah. pretty locally based what you're doing? Well, when I say local, I sort of mean, uh, yeah, because I'm, I think I said this to you earlier that I kind of stop. I mean, I start before things happen, before things are seen 
in the art world and trends or whatever. And I worked my way back that way. That's the way I'm working. So it's kind of in a, in a milieu of unknown territory of younger artists who are just coming up and just uh, um, finding their way. That's what, that's the area I look at and that's the area I'm involved with. So uh, I feel like that's an intimate, maybe local, I call it local. I'm not sure if that's the proper word, but uh, more built on, based on relationship and not on, 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 uh, not on global art trends. Not on or global, something. no, no. Uh, yeah. Li Zhang Hua, you, mm. come, you come from a definite global perspective and you curate all over the world and I love your shows. Do you see the impact of globalization on Chinese artists in a different way than Ji Hang or? Um... A lot of artists I know, they're so, so much um, uh, internationally famous. You know, let's say Cao Fei. Right. Let's say Lu, Lu Yang. You know, a lot of right. these uh, artists, you know, they pick up the topic and they use the new method and they, they, they jump into the new technology. So they work a lot on VR, AR, whatsoever. Um, and I just think, you know, this is a part of the, so what we call it, the, the globalization phenomenon, because this is, you know, um, I see this as a one very important part in contemporary Chinese art because people try to catch up, people try to do something very new and fresh. So in a way, like for example, this morning I was chatting with a, a young artist from Beijing um, and her work is completely dealing with, uh, you know, this uh, encrypted um, uh, tokens. So like dealing with the, the whole kind of economy world um, with the, uh, with the Bitcoin issues. And they're like, uh, she's not What's only name? doing this as Jia Ying, Liu Jia Ying. Ying. Yeah, and she's not just like doing it, you know, as um, artists somehow encounter with that. She's actually a um, new technology kind of entrepreneur. And she got her interest like study art in Kafa. And I got uh, introduced by her professor and <laughs> Wujian Wu said, yeah, maybe you should know her because somebody is very strange. <laughs> and I said, yeah, sure. I would love to talk to her because I'm interested in this topic for, um, I would say five, six years already. And I'm interested in knowing, you know, how technology reflects on this so-called um, global, globalized situation. And also how artists be aware of the art, uh, technology actually they're using in their artistic work, because they are also like a, a political decision. You know, what you do with your, with your camera, what you do with your um, brush, what you do, you know, with your hand and, and so on and so on, with your performance, your body, you know, everything counts today. So this is uh, all have to be, for me, it's uh, very important and also interesting, like everything have to be redefined. Like what kind of medium you're using, how you see the world and, and how you bring this topic into a certain kind of discussion with what kind of, you know, group of people and how you elaborate it and how you kind of modify and keep changing. So this is for me, this is, you know, something very, very, very important. But that's also part of the spirit of Chinese contemporary art. Well, thank you. Jahang, do you have a reaction to what Jamie and Li Zhenhua have been talking about? Sorry. Yeah, I, I think I think um, I can follow what um, um, uh, Jamie and um, uh, Zhenghua said, and I think part of the excitement for working with um, contemporary Chinese art um, uh, is the fact that uh, artists are dealing with the very current, um, the current globalization, the current urbanization. And we don't have answers, we only have observations. Mm -hmm. And we can see that uh, how people react uh, to those changes, to these movement, to these um, uh, transformations. Um, but no one can conclude it, no one can define it. Um, people are looking at such a complex from um, different perspectives and different point of views. Um, and it's like, it's like COVID-19, although that we have 
um, uh, a little hope of vaccines. So who knows that's going to work and who knows um, this whole bloody pandemic, uh, where this pandemic will lead us to. Um, it's, it's, we have to leave this kind of elastic um, relationship uh, with the COVID-19 uh, in the, in the uh, uh, urban transformation uh, case, the artists are always have this kind of elastic relationship between their practice and the, the reality. Um, and they are talking to each other. They're, they're, they, they can influence each other. Um, oh, all right. Are you done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, only one thing that I can add is that, um, for example, the new generation artists um, and the new scholars, um, I really admire some, uh, some um, uh, really young scholar, one of uh, uh, our uh, PhD students who is in, in our center, who is actually dealing with uh, urbanization and contemporary art, but through uh, a perspective uh, of um, uh, uh, fictional uh, narrative uh, in contemporary art, in contemporary Chinese art. I don't know whether Federica uh, Mira is here, but if she's here, she will, she will uh, know what I, uh, why I mentioned um, uh, Yang Yuan Yuan, because Yang Yuan Yuan and Zhang Yi, uh, which uh, James mentioned about, was two uh, artists of her case studies. Um, that's really interesting um, uh, to, to look at uh, the, the artist's name and, and <laughs> You're freezing, Jehang. Jehang. All right. Maybe We've that. lost Jehang for a minute. But okay. I wanted but, to ask no. <clears throat> I wanted to ask Jamie a piece that I think perfectly illustrates what we're all talking about in terms of urbanization's impact on artists is the centerpiece of your show, Composite Leviathan, and how you say the cracks let the light in. And I was wondering if you could speak about that sculpture um, in terms of some of the issues we're talking about and tell us a little bit about the artist and how you discovered the work. Jamie? Yeah. <clears throat> Well, I, I forgot exactly how and when I met him. I think I meet artists by osmosis somehow, just by being there. But uh, uh, I saw his work years ago and then talked to him about doing a project for Telescope and he did one. And uh, I always loved him, his mind, the things he does are sort of out of the box. They are um, kind of subversive in a way. They are uh, performance related, they're, they're political, they're they're humorous, there is so much uh, ground he covers. Um, a couple of, a few years ago, he took his whole family on a trip to the United States and went to visit different Indian American, Native American Indian reservations to talk to them about their singing and about the singing how they, and the mountain ranges, how their, their songs are sort of based on maybe the, the, the landscape of the mountain ranges. And, I always thought this is amazing. This, he's, he's gone to places that no American's ever gone to, to do research for a piece in a land that he's never been to, uh, you know, a foreign language. And uh, I just I always admired him for his, his, uh, his uh, thinking so far ahead of, of me or anyone else. So anyway, I saw the, this piece at, at Fight Box in a show he did. I can't remember, 2018, 2019. And I was just completely you know, blown away by it. And um, at first, you know, I just, just saw it uh, as what it was, as this towering kind of a tottering structure with these leaded metal plates uh, uh, hung, loosely hung on it. And when I started doing the show, I just thought, well, I've got to have, Je I got to have Yang, Jing in, Yang Jin in the show and I want to show that piece. So um, I didn't intend for it to be the centerpiece, as you say, I didn't intend for it to take the, be the name of the show but it happened later and I thought well really because uh the show as you mentioned earlier it's a sort of a collection of dis disparate or or uh maybe seemingly not connected artists and artworks um but I always felt they were related especially through just 
uh, the connection of, of something unseen, which is relationship or spirit. And, uh, and so I thought, well, you know, this is a composite, you know, and I thought this is what the, the show really, really, um, it didn't exemplify it, but it just this is a, a image, a snapshot of what the show is composed of. Um, when I was walking down the street with, with Lina and going to see a show at the C5 Gallery in San Lituan, and I noticed on the wall, a writing on the wall, and it was a quote from Leonard Cohen. And they, there's cracks, there's cracks in everything, and that's how the light gets in. And so we went to the show and we were returning. She said, Jamie, look at that on the wall. I went, oh yeah, I saw that earlier. And when I saw it again, I thought, that's it. That is the, that's what the exhibition is really about. That's what the composite Leviathan is uh, for me, for the sculpture and for the exhibition, that it's, a, um, it's this uh, image of a, of a system, of a mixture of systems, of politics, of government, of capital, of power, of uh, uh, commercial, and with these loose hanging, you know, covering, aren't like suit, a suit of armor made from, you know, anything from a chicken head to, uh, to a Roman centurion from different uh, parks, uh, public squares, shopping malls, uh, buildings, all over, I guess all over China. I'm not sure where he got them all. And I thought this is really, you know, the show is kind of made up of a composite of, of disparate pieces but they all hang together in one aspect. And that's how the, what is broken in t tends to be what is actually the strength of, of, our, of the work and the strength of the show is what is broken is by the mended by the, I thought without the light going in. So the cracks I thought really reveal the internal structure, which is, uh, I mean, you can talk about many different aspects of that, but the inside was this twisted rebar of used, steel that were, was used to build, you know, construct in China, construct new homes, uh, highways, but then was ripped out and tossed aside, sort of like many things that Jie Hong showed in his lecture, but these were just the, the skeleton of things that don't, doesn't really have any value. It has no real, I don't think any real memory to it, but that was what was uh, inside, uh, inside that the, the uh, one, uh, brokenness reveals uh, reveals the cause, the source of brokenness, but it also is the redemptive quality of letting the light in to expose, you know, and to to bring it to a whole. So, you know, it's the creative act of making that work is the is the healing kind of the uh, accomplishment of uh, of uh, yeah of that work of art. But anyway, of the show. So that. I mean, I didn't, like I said, I think the, the show is even the most delicate work sitting next to that, which is Zhang Xinjun's, you know, burlap piece with the fake, you know, pieces of coal, which is wood uh, stoked in ink on the floor or, or Xie Hongdong's photos of these delicate uh, infrastructure of, of frost or ice on a, on a window from his home, his home or spider webs. And that uh, every piece has its own power. It's just different kinds of power. And of course, th that sculpture by Yang Jian is, is tall. It's like a skyscraper. So it kind of tends to be, as you say, a centerpiece. But I think if you walk around the show, it, it, you see that it's made of all kinds of different people with different views and different lives and, uh, and different powers in themselves. You know what's interesting to me? Um, and it may be because you meet artists at a very early point in their careers. But when I was meeting young artists in China, many of them felt that globalization had opened doors for them and were definitely thinking beyond Beijing and Shanghai for where to show their work. Were your artists surprised that they were showing in the United States? Were they happy about it? Or did it seem like that's the next step for them? Jamie? Well, I mean, John Rui has had a show in LA. I don't know the other artists. I can't remember. I don't think many or any have been in, in the United States. I, I, I may be wrong on, on that, but I think, you know, John Rui was the only one that I can, might not think of, or maybe, I'm not sure if Lee Rod, maybe Lee Rod has, but, um, you know, I got all the way from, I can't believe this is happening to me, to, uh, uh, yeah, basically they were, of course they were very excited. 
and it was a door, a door that was open to them. And I think that was my goal is to give these artists a platform on a world stage, which I have more connections in America than I do other places. To give them that platform. So yeah, they, they were excited. I mean, it's nothing like working with emerging artists who are excited <laughs> about yes. opportunities. They are just, they're ready to go and they'll do anything. So it's, a, it's kind of a pleasure to, uh, yeah, it's just a pleasure. It's, a, it's very fulfilling to me to see this happen for them. And of course, my hope and dream is that it, it doesn't stop there. Like the fluidity that Jia Hong talks about, there would be this fluidity of the Chinese culture would keep flowing. And, yes. Uh, yeah, I was just about to just, ask Jia Hong that. Yeah, yeah, just not in there. Is that right? Oh, interesting. Jia Hong, what do you think about what um, Jamie was just talking about in terms of, do you feel like the artworks in this show are a continuation of what you're laying out or are there contradictions? Um, contradictions, what do you mean by that? Uh, do you feel like a younger generation of artists is continuing the work that you've been talking about? Or do you feel like uh, they're onto something else now? Because I see a lot of parallels between some of the artworks in Composite Leviathan and the artworks you were talking about, even though it's very different materials. Mm. I, I think the uh, the the new generation artists they they are not comparable with with the old generation because I mean for example the uh, the example the sample artist that I introduced in my talk um, somebody uh, for, uh, let's say uh, Zhang Pei Li um, he's always in China oh well he's traveling around but he was trained in in China. Um, and similarly, like Hu Jiaming, although they're showing their work everywhere, um, unlike Lin Yiling, who is now based in New York. Um, um, but a lot of Chinese artists, that they are based in China, but the new generation artists, they can see so many things. Um, they are participating um, um, exhibition around the world, big or small, and they're meeting with um, similar age artists across the world. Um, and the learning process is different. Um, the width uh, of the learning is different. But I have to say that the depth is different too. Um, and um, you don't, well, I can't say that. Um, but I, when I work with my artists, sometimes that young artists, you will feel that they are Hmm, how do I put it? Um, Too career-oriented? Um, not really. They are, they are jumping. They are having learning the form and the ways in which that they express their ideas quickly. But they need to understand their ideas. They, they need to firm up their ideas better before expression. Um, I'm not saying I can't generalize these things, but um, if we think about uh, those two, it's, it's like uh, when I have a conversation with uh, another um, scholar the other day for this uh, talk series, um, is that, you know, the, every day that we receive information from our mobile phones, um, the, the information, I can't remember the statistics. It's like you, you if you read going through all the information that you can receive every day today, it's equivalent to how many years that, uh, let's say 30 years ago, for instance. And then you see this momentum of the change in China and you yourself are immersed in this change. You are part of the change. And that is the challenge uh, for the artist uh, to stick with the change and being um, independent to critically reflect upon the changes, no matter whether you are younger generation or older generation. All right, interesting. Li Zhenhua? Yeah? Um, I would love to ask you if, when you're looking at Chinese art in a global context, um, if you think 
urbanization has been a good thing or is it impacting artists in negative ways? For example, um, a lot of artist communities got torn up last year in Beijing um, to make way for development. And um, at the same time, obviously globalization has opened doors for a lot of Chinese artists. How do you view the situation? Or is that a I dumb think question? The well, <laughs> urbanization is everywhere. And yeah. I just think, you know, human being will never stop. And um, we keep, you know, destroy the world. We keep uh, burning down the jungles. We keep polluting the ocean. And I just think, you know, this is, uh, this is part of fact we have to understand. And also, I just think, you know, like that there's a different way of thinking about urbanization today. And I do think, you know, the issue of actually changing the city or changing the, the concrete world is a, is a one task. But there's other ways of actually thinking about your social media um, performances, thinking about you know, how you engaged uh, with people uh, virtually. And I mean, for me, this is something we have to be more aware of, actually thinking about you know, your face um, are actually data of your face can be stolen now. <laughs> and thinking about, you know, like this is all part of urbanization because it's also all part of organization. This is all right. part of a globalization. You know, I don't know um, how Zoom gonna use our data for, you know, for what? You know, maybe, right. maybe, maybe Zoom share the, our data with WeChat <laughs> and maybe WeChat share our data with Amazon. You know, immediately we get a, a push notification. So I just think, you know, I'm- So uh, is this good alive. for artists or bad for artists? Is it help, is it I, I don't know, artists? because I, I'm not saying, you know, it's a good or bad. It's like a, how artists gonna take it as a, a topic or task. This is something I'm really highly concerned. You know, what kind of uh, issues that artists pick it up and also how much engagement they have and how much they know about it. like. What I'm saying, you know, before about technology, but also like when when you did the project with uh, Art at this time, uh, online project. So even our project been uh, postponed because of the BLM movement. I just think, right. you, know, you know, this is a part of the globalization. We have to get engaged and involved because this is not no longer a issue just happening somewhere else. It's like a, it's it's happening in our history, in human history. So I think this is something very, very important. So I cannot just treating Chinese contemporary art or Chinese local practice as part of the, the local practice anymore. This is part of our globalization issues. This is a part of urbanization issues also worldwide. And I think this is some issues we have to think a lot. I mean, I'm not saying this is good, this is bad. I'm just saying, you know, be aware of that. You need a lot more knowledge and you need to listen to a lot of different kinds of voices. And also I'm really keen on knowing, you know, artists are doing certain kind of practice with in these more engaged issues. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's yeah. very interesting. And I know you're looking at a lot of interesting artists. Jamie, yeah. I was gonna ask you, when we're talking about urbanization, has the destruction of so many artist colonies in Beijing impacted your artists? Well, this kind of again takes it down to just the uh, you know life and death. Oh, yeah, it it packs the artists because they they lose their studios. Uh, they have to move way out. I have one friend who had to move out of uh, move into Hebei to get find a place he could afford. So <laughs> it's broken up the community that did exist around Cao Chengdi and Heichao and Chijoba, but it uh, it impacts them. But you know, I again, I just Artists don't quit, they don't stop. I mean, um, I, I think it even, sh it makes them uh, perhaps deeper, I would say, I actually think, because they, they struggle harder and to, to go further. It's, uh, I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. I think it was just the opposite, uh, that urbanization would have a kinder soul, uh, but, I also think that artists will survive. They keep surviving. I mean, I lived in New York in the 80s and 90s and losing places, you know, uh, 
East Village cropped up and then, you know, died out and um, you, you had to work, you know, three quarters of the day just to pay for that other quarter, you know, uh, just at a job. It was just hard. So it, it, um, life has been, I think, maybe more complicated, more difficult and more separate. I think it's separated the, the artists more. And uh, maybe it's that's breaking pretty, up the communities. It's breaking, yeah, it's up, breaking, the community. breaking up the communities, the personal touch. But I think, you know, things like even COVID has sort of brought people back together through Zoom or through Internet. Oh, interesting. So I, it, uh, I, I guess you're saying, I, I think, yes, it has impacted them. I, know, I think sometimes adversely, but I think also artists just don't quit. They keep going and they keep finding new ways. And in the end, I always think that it even uh, is advantageous in certain ways to, their, to the, what their process, to their product, to what they do and make. And um, a question I'm directing to all three of you is Jahan talked a lot about with Sung Dong, Sung Dong's work, that he was moving away from the Chinese-ness of the artists who emerged in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that as increasingly a trend brought on by globalization and urbanization. I'd like Jahan, Jahan to talk about this a little bit and then for you, Jamie, and Li Zhenhua to respond. Okay. Thank you, Barbara. Um, it, this is, this is a, a, a sort of ongoing topic that we keep talking about this. Um, and the, the, the first discussion I had was in, I think, year 2000 or 2001 uh, in a seminar in British Museum uh, when we're talking about Chinese card, Zhongguo Pai and French card or whatever. Um, I don't mind at all uh, about, you know, playing Chinese card or using um, the, any image in relation or referring to this kind of Chinese-ness uh, or Chinese culture, because we are Chinese, you know, a everything that we do, although we can speak um, English, but natively that we, I mean, naturally we are Chinese. And if I'm an artist, um, um, well, I was an artist until, until my PhD killed my artistic life. Um, mm -hmm. I, I um, you know, I, 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 I use um, the words, I mean, the visual words and vocabularies differently um, in terms of um, the topic and how, what would be the most effective and efficient way to respond to the topic or to answer any research questions. Um, so it's, it's, it's not really um, the, um, the vocabulary that you are trying to use. It's the grammar, basically. It's the way in which that you use the, use the vocabulary. That's more important. And I think some of the artists, um, they are using um, those kind of vocabulary too bluntly. And when I say blunt, is that there, there isn't a sort of uh, a natural um, rationale behind uh, the work and therefore you see that oh you are showing off your Chinese-ness and therefore you know raising the v international visibility and blah 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 um, however um, some work you can see the Chinese-ness there um, one thing that I can think of immediately is Huang Yongping's work always you can see the Chinese-ness in the work but I, I always admire uh, his work although not 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 uh, reasoned to work, um, but anyway, um, but the majority of the work is really admirable and the way in which that he played the Chinese card is really uh, interesting and inspiring. Um, but if you keep using play the card, um, um, the, 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 well, I, I, let's, let's not mention artist's name, um, uh, but for the positive side, that um, um, when I say that Song Dong is less Chinese uh, or being Chinese less, um, that's quite unusual in that those times. I mean, the late nineties, um, and and sometimes he will use this kind of uh, Chinese vocabulary or digital vocabulary as well. Um, 
but in in a in a, in an innovative way. So I don't I don't mind either way. It's it's really to do with um, the methods. Okay, thank you, Li Zhongwan, Jamie. Um, how do you deal with the notion of Chinese identity in artist work, and is that changing due to urbanization and globalization? Um, I'd like to start with Li Zhongwan. Okay. Um... On the knowledge side, um, I think Chinese needs have a long tradition of, you know, for example, you know, the Sinologist uh, community from France, Germany, and America, and also like try to understand things from Sinology to Chinese study. That's, you know, two completely different chapter of understanding what is China is about. And then to understand Chinese art, I guess think this is also a tactical issue um, a lot of people actually invent this tactical issue uh, actually invent by inventing the others of the Chinese Chinese niece into this kind of globalized situation. And I just do think, you know, this is all uh, what I think, you know, from this basic frame and then think about the transformation of today. So thinking about, you know, what is urbanization means like, um, like what I mentioned just before, but also thinking about, you know, um, I have very interesting thought about this. It's like, um, we talk a lot about AI and deep learning issues, but right. actually we, we, are, we are trained, you know, by AI and machines. So machines actually completely controlled us, you know, in a way. So this is part of, urbanization too, because thinking about, you know, urbanization as, as in the past, it's only reflected on buildings, like how, how, how tall you can build, how fast you can build certain kind of things. But nowadays, I just think, you know, so it's go into the detail of your brain of how actually urbanization is a part of, uh, you know, the controlling system of actually thinking, um, what you're doing and dealing with the, all these kind of things. But of course, you know, there are artists, like I mentioned, uh, for example, recently it's uh, Lu Yang's work. Yeah. She completely digitalized herself. She completely digitalized herself with whatsoever the gestures from the Southeast Asia um, and also many other Asian, Asian countries, you know, it's a, it's a project part of a BMW, the art journey issue. <laughs> so for me, this is a, this is a, a wonderful project to respond to your issues of globalization and urbanization of thinking of all, still using these tactical issues of the others, you know, of the unknown area, but in a way it's like completely being digitalized. <laughs> it's interesting that you said Lu Yang, because yeah. right now I'm working on a show with her to bring to New York yeah. in April, and I'm very oh, familiar with her work. And I just think, mm. um, that it's interesting how Asian culture is in her work, even though it's completely the internet and 21st century ideas. So, mm. Um, mm. absolutely. Yeah. Good choice. And, <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. And, yeah. Um, yeah, she's amazing. So, we're almost done. Um, I was wondering if we should leave the last few minutes for questions or if any of you have something you want to say to sum, sum up. Why don't we start with you, Jehang? What have you gotten out of this conversation? Um, can I add um, a commercial break here? <laughs> I say commercial break. <laughs> yeah. Commercial break. That, uh, it's, it's responding to uh, your question, uh, Barbara. You're talking about how do we feel about Chinese-ness and so on and so forth. Uh, we are organizing our 14th annual conference next year. And the topic is transcultural curating, China as a method. Oh, I um, must come. Yeah, so it's, it's not, China is no longer a subject alone because any China issue at the moment is a world issue really. Right. You know, we, we use China as a method rather than uh, a, a subject. Um, so um, all of you are very welcome to join us and I will send you the details. Great. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, Zhenhua, do you have something you want to add before we end? 
um, I think I said what I, what I want to say. <laughs> so that's all. Um, all right. Keep learning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Keep learning um, and also catch up with the technology. So. <laughs> yes, catch up with the technology. Yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And Jamie, do you want to sum up something about your show or your experience working with bridge projects? No. I, well, I'm uh, thrilled that they took this leap, you know, the step to uh, to do this. It's quite complicated and, and expensive, and yet they believed in it and uh, have held the line and just pursued, you know, doing the show through even thick and thin. So I want to thank them very much for doing that. Um, yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you all and thank the audience. Um, now, what do we do? <laughs> we stop. <laughs> I, I can do a, I'll just wrap up with a little um, announcement of what our next event is. And, um, and all right. But thank you, Linnea, very much for up. inviting me. This was a pleasure today. What a what a wonderful and fascinating um, group of individuals, and then what we've been able to learn has been really fun too. So, um, thank you so much for coming and contributing your experience. Um, so, just to let everyone know, we have uh, a composite Leviathan in two chapters. So, what's up right now will be taken down in a few days, as James has said, and then. Um, we will be putting the second chapter up uh, beginning of next year. So uh, that will include a lot of installations and larger scale work. Um, so look forward to, we all look forward to that. It's gonna be very exciting. Uh, and come again, if you are able to, to see the second part. Um, we have our programming continuing with uh, a lecture called The Virgin Mother, Her Majesty, Our Lady, Globalism All Under Heaven, and Madonna in Between, which is quite a title, um, with Dong Liu, and that's on Tuesday, January 12th, and that's between 5 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. That's all um, Pacific Standard Time, just so you know. Um, anyway, uh, just as well, for those of you who haven't had answers that you're at burning to ask, um, I'm sorry, questions that you're burning to ask, opposite, um, you can join us afterwards. We're going to have a little um, after party for whomever wants to hang out afterwards, but we are officially over our time. And so those of you who need to leave, by all means, do that. Um, and we thank you for coming. All right. Goodbye. <laughs>
for young people. And I find that really fascinating because, you know, we live in Los Angeles, mm. which is a city that really does specialize in collaging in fac facsimiles of mm. different times and places. Mm. And it is a method mm. and it's an interesting thing because in this case, it's a living nostalgia, a whole generation of people that remember precisely what the haptic quality of living in the 80s yes. was like in certain, in certain places. But then memory becomes distended and we're looking at French chateaus from you know the 16th century in LA and no one has a living memory of that, but we, we see it as a pattern and we yes. recognize it as trying to function in a certain way. Yeah. Do you see that happening potentially in China in certain cities and certain contexts? No, I this think, goes I think, into your... I think in China, I'm pretty sure people will follow that. Um, mm -hmm. And this method will be copied. Um, but whether or not they can achieve the similar quality of production, that's another matter. Um, one thing that I uh, remember is that uh, we had the lunch with my uh, student and her husband. And on the way out from, I think the fourth floor down, um, so we walked down so we can see more sort of scenes and shops. Um, they call it shops like a uh, barber shop or, uh, or, or um, kind of different uh, places but uh, clubs and, and, and um, uh, uh, shops, uh, but they are all restaurants. But on the way out, there is a, there is a fire uh, exit door. It should be closed, but it was um, opened um, a, a gap. So I peeped in um, the, uh, the fire ex exit door. And I actually, I think that was the third floor uh, of the whole uh, Wen He Yo restaurant. And I peeped in, uh, that was the modern shopping mall next door. They are, they are actually one door apart. Um, I can't forget about this because it's so surreal. You know, you, you've just been to a restaurant, you sort of immersed yourself in the 1780s and on the way out, just a, you know, a few bricks away, you see a completely um, yeah. different scenario. It's the present and you are in the past and the present is only five meters away. Um, it's all this kind of posh modern sort of uh, um, fashion and, and bags, you know, um, ladies and gentlemen there. And you can see that um, that's, that's so much something, you know, very, very interesting. Um, and responding to uh, D. Tan's um, comments, I think you are right. I think this is um, uh, juxtaposing those two scenario um, is a particular uh, phenomenon uh, in China. As I introduced during my talk, if we do that, um, in, in, let's say, in Birmingham or in London, it's going to be less interesting because no one knows what happens, let's say, 200 years ago. But in China, everybody experienced this kind of scenario a few decades ago, and um, they are still alive, and therefore, it, this is not uh, their memory any longer. They have become a present, a new present. It's like getting on an elevator, yeah. walking on an elevator and getting off in a whole nother department yeah. or getting on an airplane in just a short time, you're uh, in another, another world. You can't speak a language. You go yeah. into a box and come out. <laughs> it's very surreal. Well, this is another thing. If you are talking about airplane is that in China, where, wherever you fly, I mean, I, I used to do um, uh, some school business trip, university business trip. And I have to fly, you know, almost every day from one city hop to the other. Mm. And one night you woke up in the morning. Um, I always stayed in one sort of chain, international chain hotel. And the hotel room setting is the same. The lobby is the same. Even you walk out, the street is the same, more or less. 
and you can't remember, you know, which city are you in. So yeah. this is part of the product of the globalization. Yeah, seven days hotel. I stayed all over China. Yeah. <laughs> it's always the same, same toothbrush. But yeah. You walk out the door, and and uh, it was completely different. Yeah. So that's why I make uh, Wen Ke Liu so special. Um, mm. You're no longer waiting for new, you're waiting for the old. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's really interesting. I feel like it probably has, oh, go ahead, Vicky. Oh, I was just gonna say, I don't know if this is a question so much, um, as, I don't know, <laughs> a, a thought. Um, but it's just, it's interesting how um, there's something about proximity where you don't get the perspective or being able to look at things subjectively. But when hearing your lecture and you, uh, the panelists all speak, it made me think of, I mean, urbanization, globalization, all these things that it's not unique to China, it's happening yeah. everywhere but um and perhaps maybe in other regions around the world it maybe occurred at different more extremely at different time periods um but there's something about not being able to process it really when when it's your own country that you're when you are going through it so there is something about this time where we're connected we're more, um, I think, looking outwards and seeing, being more aware of what's going around the globe and the world that we, we do, we can analyze this. And, um, but it's just interesting about how, if anything, it, it teaches us so much about our own lives here in America too, learning about China. Um, just, um, we like to always think of problems happening elsewhere, but, <laughs> or, these phenomena occurring elsewhere, but it's, um, so it was more just, it's not really a question. <laughs> it was just, uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I had a question that's been occurring to me periodically throughout this talk. You talk about urbanization and the invisible antecedent to that is uh, the natural world and um, it's kind of shrinkage um, in these contexts, you know, as urbanization increases, That's a good um, question. there's even less, you know, there's less space for parks or waterways or natural kind of effects of the landscape to have an impression on the population there. So I just wonder, how, are there artists that, you know, talk about this kind of issue? Um, it seems to be quite something in the bloodstream here in the United States, but is that the case in China? Sorry, are you asking me? Oh, anyone? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen numerous artists do projects about the environmental conditions in China. That was a big thing for a while. I'm sorry, but right at the moment, I can't remember a name to throw out as an example, but I definitely swore projects on, for example, how mining is destroying the landscape mm -hmm. or how the condition of migrant workers flooding into the cities, how their lives are. So, um, so it's not oblivious mm -hmm. um, at all. But it's not as highly publicized because a lot of this work is not gallery based work. So it doesn't necessarily even get shown widely or um, I wind up seeing it in New York and finding out that it wasn't shown in China, but um, hmm. you know, because of, but now maybe with the merging, so many emerging museums more of this work, we'll, we'll see more of this work coming out because there'll be more venues, not-for-profit venues to show it in. But I don't think that Chinese artists are ignoring the environmental issues at all. I can, I can give you some more examples. Like for example, um, some years ago, there's a filmmaker called Wang Jiuliang. He made a very popular film called The City Surrounded by Garbage. Um, 
maybe you can search it out. And also like artists I've been working with like uh, Guo Guo Zhu, and he's uh, focusing on, you know, this abundant village for, for many years already. So he, he keep taking photos of those villages um, completely left um, abundant in, in everywhere. So it's like a, a long-term project. So there are, I mean, a lot of this concern, but the question is how we turn this kind of concern into um, a public, a public di discussion. Um, and also, you know, through the artistic art system, it's rather difficult because right. um, artists, you know, they deserve shows. But then after the show, you know, the, the, the how, how you call it, the, the, the point is somehow it's misleaded or it's, it's completely into something, um, you know, just in this um, bit narrowed down kind of contemporary art um, discussion. So I, I'm also thinking, you know, those kind of work, like if you are concerned about this, um, you know, big issues about globalization, urbanization, and I think the best way of actually present the work is also in the public and creating a public domain and also find the people and, you know, uh, talk with them. Um, and I think, you know, Guo Gu Zhu found his, uh, his um, um, community and also Wang Zhu Liang found his community. And there's a lot of these kind of uh, topics, you know, like through, through talk programs, there's uh, several of them. If you know uh, ETL, uh, which is very particular, so it's like a, a TED in China. But, um, you know, there's a lot of really interesting people. Like, for example, once I was listening to um, a person, a, a woman who talking about um, how she been research and working with a, a prostitute in, in China. And I think this is so, for me, it's so inspiring because uh, sometimes maybe um, there's a little bit too much of uh, pressure for artists to take on that topic. And also we have to know there's a lot of these social workers um, and also researchers, intellectuals are being aware of all these kind of issues. You know, like uh, yesterday there was a big, big issue about uh, Me Too in China, for example. Yeah. Actually, oh, like, and the uh, question reminds me of the uh, the trend not only among the uh, artist practice, but also uh, in in the whole Chinese art world. There's a uh, it's not like a mainstream yet, but it seems like more and more art institutions, uh, art studios are moving to the countryside, uh, uh, far from. Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou, and, and even like the, the major uh, uh, museum, UCCA, has a branch uh, far away from Beijing and in a beach, uh, at, at a beach, and, and has a very interesting, uh, uh, very interesting designed uh, museum located there. It seem, and it seems to me that um, artists in the art institutions are looking for new spaces uh, far away from uh, what we so-called the, the urbanized area. But um, actually, yeah, it also reminds me of what Li Zhenghua talked about, the new form of urbanization, like the, um, the artist did the art in institutions and also other institutions bring the urban life to the countryside. Um, the good side is it definitely helps with the intensity of the city life, helps reduce the intensity of the city life. But on the other, on the other hand, they, they bring the, the new form of urbanization to the countryside. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, this is a like a common and also like an open question if Zhenghua or uh, anyone else like to uh, comment on that. No. 
<laughs> oh, great. That's a th thanks for the link, Jamal. Yeah, I'm sending you the links. I don't know. I, I think, like in my time in New York, artists always move out further and further away for survival to get a place, studios or living where they can afford have the, have the space, et cetera. And what happens, uh, they don't intend gentrification, but th it just follows. Real estate follows the artists. And um, unfortunately, like moving into the, Cao Changdi was a village, then the gallery showed up. Um, uh, so I don't, it's just, it's got collateral damage, I think. But uh, when you look around, it's just, even where I, the countryside where I am in Texas, the city is just growing, Dallas, Fort Worth is just growing so large, it's taking over, you know, huge swaths of old farmland. It's just, it's, you can't, it's happening. So it's what you do. I mean, I, I don't know how to say it. I don't think the artists are always the ones called to to, to uh, stand up against these things, but to I find ways of like anti-venom. I kind of think that a composite Leviathan is an anti-venom to the, to the, the, the system. Uh, they're using the same materials, but producing things that, that have no value. You know, um, it's like the uh, antithesis. So uh, I'm not sure, we're not, I'm not, I, I think we're not necessarily saying the different things, but um, it's hard to stop that movement uh, of urbanization away from the centers where, the, where, it, where it began. And, uh, you know, in the end, the artists want to survive, I think, and, and create. And I, to me, the act of creation, just to create something, is a healing uh, balm to culture. Uh, no matter what they say, if it's just a flower, you know, on a painting, or if it's a, you know, a, a video uh, dealing with certain, uh, with the ecology, I think it's still, it's all, it's a very healing way to affect culture at large just the act of creation. Uh, we are created beings and we create. And I think that's, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's the artist has different roles and they're not all the same, but the, every artist creates. And I think that in itself is, is an act of, of healing. Yeah, but um, I would like to respond a little bit because mm -hmm. I think um, to talk about this issue, the, the major issue is actually about um, how we get engaged. Um, and also like, I think from a curator, a curator point of view, it's so important um, to actually thinking about that and also um, being engaged and also participate in the change is very important. Like last year I did two uh, big projects in, in Pingshan in Shenzhen. It's actually a new kind of urbanized area uh, which is like uh, they, the gov local government um, somehow wanted it to be a new, new uh, booming, uh, booming location for Shenzhen. So I did um, the sculpture, like uh, uh, annual sculpture exhibition there. And also I helped them for open a new museum show. And um, I just think, you know, like through this kind of involvement and engagement um, and participating in the project actually we could think about, you know, how we somehow through art and through commission the new projects to really kind of deliver a different kind of message. And I think that's so important because otherwise people would only think, you know, the urbanization or globalization as a, as a, as a bad thing, but, but only hang there as um, a metaphorical kind of thought. And, um, I'm more into this kind of taking the action um, gesture. I'm into this um, thinking, but also at the same time, we have to practice with it. We cannot treat it as some other thing will come to us. We are in it. And uh, this is something we have to be um, um, and pay attention on. Yeah. Jin yeah. let me just say this. I, uh, I think it was 2008. I just entered China and I, I think I went yeah. to Shanghai, Guangzhou and then Nanjing to see my first kind of biennial triennials. And 
Yeah. Did you do the 2008 Nanjing Triennial? <laughs> yes. Still, I did. Yeah, it's still, mm. uh, pardon? Mm. Yes, Nanjing, but also Beijing. For the, oh. uh, I'm the producer of the, uh, the big international uh, media art uh, triennial. Right, right. You know, right. with Zhang Ga and Fan Dian together. Yeah, yeah. 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 But the uh, triennial in Nanjing, for somehow, I, I still have not forgotten. Yeah, also. It. It was a beautiful yeah, <laughs> balance between curation, uh, yeah. dis installation design, and, and this building. And there were three kind of like separate entities going on. This old, old, beautiful old building, which you can't really put contemporary art in. And how they, <laughs> the designer yeah. put these just drywall, this uh, un, yeah. Yeah. not taped embedded, but just drywall. And, and, and with your curation, it was yeah. just, I thought it was yeah, a fantastic exhibition. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, both Jamie and Lee Genois have done exhibitions that have completely opened my mind and helped me so much. So I have to thank them for that. 